Live, local, breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. And we're going to begin tonight with this live look from our Hilton Greenville Sky Cam and a big change coming in the weather. Chief Meteorologist John Sesrich joins us. John, heavy rain will get here soon, huh? Yeah, probably later on this evening, at least a few pockets, Carol and Michael, of some uh, scattered showers and heavy thunderstorms. The bulk of the precipitation, the real heavy stuff, probably will be at just around midnight or after midnight tonight and during the day tomorrow. You can see thunderstorms. A few of these thunderstorms have been locally severe uh, right around the Macon area, and they're lifting very quickly in our direction. This is a severe thunderstorm watch, which continues for Huntsville. To Nashville, and then in central Kentucky, all the way up and through Ohio, tornado watches continue. Uh, very slight chance that we could see a strong to severe than a storm here tonight and tomorrow, but our main threat really will be flooding. And notice on live Super Doppler 4 HD, everything's quiet now, but we'll start to see scattered showers and possible thunderstorms develop as we go through this evening, but especially after midnight tonight, and that's when the flash flood watch kicks into gear. One to three inches plus of rain possible across the entire area. I'll talk more in detail about the storm system a little bit later on. Now back to you, Mike. Michael and Carol. We'll see you then, John. Thank you. Now to Western North Carolina, where a middle school teacher tonight stands accused of sex crimes against two young girls. Deputies say they found evidence on cell phones and a computer, and tonight they want to know if there are other victims. WYFF News 4's Myra Ruiz is live and local in Franklin, North Carolina tonight. Myra? Well, Michael and Carol, tonight Jeffrey Roussel is here at the Macon County Detention Center. It didn't take long for word to spread both in and outside Macon County Middle School about charges filed against one of the teachers. You just don't believe that that could actually happen so close to home. 24-year-old Jeffrey Roussel is accused of taking indecent liberties with a 13-year-old girl who attended Macon County Middle School while Roussel was a student teacher there. More often than we know, I think it does happen. It just people just don't know about it. Deputies say the charges stem from incriminating images found on computers and cell phones, and that includes evidence of sexting. Actually, my sister goes to school there. She knows this girl, and she goes to school there. She sees this man every day, and she's petrified. You know, I just, I don't understand how something like that could slip through the cracks. Cynthia Condemi says she checks her 13-year-old daughter's cell phone from time to time. My daughter is, she, she's very smart. She knows what's right and what's wrong, and... She cannot be influenced in any which way, shape, or form to do anything. She says the accusations against Roussel are a reminder for all parents. It's, it's scary. It really is scary. Deputies tell us they want to know if there are any other victims out there. They're telling anyone with information to co contact Crime Stoppers at 828-524-2811. My Ruiz, WYFF News 4, live in Macon County, North Carolina. Myra, thank you. Now to Honeyapath, where investigators say horseplay with a gun cost a man his life and sent a friend to jail. WYFF News 4's Angela Rodriguez is here with the latest. Angela, this started with a bulletproof vest? Carol, deputies say a young man put on a bulletproof vest and told a friend to shoot him. The shot went too high, and now that man is dead. His family doesn't know what to believe, and on top of their grief, they are worried about how to pay for a funeral. By all accounts, 25 year old Blake Wardell was in good health and good spirits. Investigators say the young man died unexpectedly at the hands of a friend. As far as I know, I ain't never heard a soul or anybody. And he just killed me this morning. They called me at three and told me he's been shot. Deputies say a group of friends had a gun, a bulletproof vest, and a bad idea. Just after 2 30 this morning, deputies found Wardell dead. They say he was wearing a bulletproof vest and had a gunshot wound to his chest. The young woman accused of pulling the trigger, 18-year-old Taylor Kelly, is now charged with involuntary manslaughter. I believe it was a crime. Charles Wardell lost his only son, and he says he is now struggling to give Blake the proper burial that he deserves. I can't afford it, and I don't know how I'm going to do it. It don't have to be no fancy. Nothing, just something I could bury in the closet, you know, open and close it. That's, that's all I could do. That's all I could ask for, you know, I just pray. And about 30 minutes ago, a judge set Taylor Kelly's bond at $10,000. Carol. Thank you, Angela. The woman accused of running over a teen at a bus stop that was in court this morning. Bond was set at $15,000 for 24 year old Leslie Littlejohn. Highway Patrol charged her with passing a stopped school bus. She is also on home detention with GPS monitoring. It happened in Gaffney at a school bus stop on Wilkinsville Highway. Troopers say Littlejohn ignored the bus stop sign and hit a 16 year old girl. 
That girl is now in ICU at Spartanburg Regional. Well, for the first time since Monday morning, a leaky truck is no longer leaking hydrogen chloride in Anderson County. WYFF News 4 is Mandy Gaither, live and local tonight, just off Interstate 85. Mandy, it was a long process. It was, Michael. And around 10 this morning, my photographer and I noticed that the plume around the truck behind me was getting bigger. It turns out there was another leak. With another valve leaking Wednesday morning, a plume of hydrochloric acid began filling the air not only from the front of the truck, but also the back. Before crews could start offloading the chemical, officers instituted rolling roadblocks for a short time. Those roadblocks went from exit 4 to 11 in both directions on Interstate 85. It slowed down traffic so no cars would be by mile marker 9, while men dressed in protective gear hooked up a hose from the leaky truck to a special tanker. The process took hours and was potentially dangerous, but Captain Matthew Littleton says it was successful. The overall risk and threat to the public is gone. Littleton says the goal here now is to clean up, which will at least take a day. If they will finish remaining any vapor or any, any pressure that's in the affected tank. They'll end up purging all that out. And then at that point, they'll have to decontaminate each trailer, each piece of equipment, everything on site before any further inspection can take place or any movement can take place. As for the many hours Anderson County County crews have spent on scene monitoring air gases removal of the chemical and now the cleanup. Officials say they'll bill the company for everything they can under county law. And Anderson County officials say they'll spend another night out here during the cleanup process to make sure there are no problems. Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4, live in Anderson County. Thank you, Mandy. Now to these terrifying images taken just moments after a bounce house lifted off the ground. With children still inside of it. This is near Albany, New York. The pictures show the bounce house reaching as high as 15 to 20 feet with the children still inside. And police say several children were seriously injured and they are still investigating tonight. WYFF News 4 investigates looked into how bounce houses are regulated in South Carolina. And Gabrielle Kamarowski joins us now. Gabby, parents might not like what you found, huh? Uh, right, Carol, and uh, we hope to get that video for you to see because those pictures really are scary. This is what we learned about bounce house companies. We've learned that they do not require insurance and they are not regulated or inspected by the Department of Labor, Licensing, and Regulation. I spoke to multiple owners of bounce house companies today, local owners. No one wanted to do an on camera interview, but one owner told me she always makes sure the bounce houses are held down with stakes. Or sandbags. She also said her company will not set up a bounce house if there are high winds. Here's the takeaway for you, and especially for parents if you're hiring a bounce house company, the BBB says you can ask them if they have insurance. We did find several local companies that say they have insurance on their website. You should also search for the company on the BBB website and ask for references.